So today we're going to talk about precision reloading. We're going to be reloading for that beast right there. That's a Remington 700, totally customized by me, built from the ground up. Uh, she started life out as a 270 Winchester, little hunting rifle I bought used up in uh, New York State. And now she is a full-on long-range machine. Uh, she's a 300 Winchester Magnum. Uh, sits in a custom stock, custom bolt work, custom muzzle brake. Uh, she's got a 50, um, 50 millimeter, 10 power scope on it. Um, she used to have an internal magazine. There's no magazine in here anymore. It's a single shot. She is all business all day long. So when we talk about precision reloading, we want to talk about repeatability. Constant and consistent repeatability. The stress gets a little bit away from the case and prepping the case and doing all that and gets a little bit more concentrated on the exact amount of powder and the type, size, and weight of the bullets that you're actually using. So what I'm using is obviously it's a, a 300 Winchester Magnum that is a belted Magnum round and it's belted for strength around the base of the case. These things have a lot of pressure coming out of them. So that's the case. I'm going to be using 150 grain for this particular reloading session. I'm using 150 grain copper jacketed, they call it a boat tail bullet. They call it a boat tail because the back of the bullet has this bevel on it like a boat. And if you actually look at it, it kind of does kind of have the silhouette of a boat. Okay, it's not a full metal jacket because the base is open. And the base is open, so what I can do is I will actually weigh each of these bullets that I'm going to be using, and I want to get all of the bullets to be exactly the same weight, plus or minus one grain. I have here on the desk powder, the two different types of powders. Now, this powder that I'm using over here this is the flake powder from the from the pistols okay this stuff is is very fine and it burns very very fast okay this stuff here this is the cylindrical powder I don't know if that's gonna come out in the video this is the cylindrical powder that I'm using in the rifle rounds this burns a little bit slower but a little bit more stable this you could say is more of an explosion this you can say is more like a rocket fuel burn it's a steady violent burn and you need that with heavier rounds out of a longer barrel so these are 150 grain rounds that are traveling around three three thousand feet per second okay when compared to the 230 grain rounds that I'm firing out of the 45 Colt and the 45 ACP I'm not firing them out of an extremely long barrel. If I was firing them out of a long barrel, I would want more of a stable burn onto it. Okay, so with a short barrel, I'm looking for a violent, powerful burn. Get that round out, get it down range. With a rifle, I'm looking at a more stable burn. You want that powder to burn long enough to continue to push that bullet faster and faster down the length of the barrel that we have. So let me talk for a minute about how I actually made up these loads. So what I do is I will use the loading chart. Now in this particular case, I'm using a Hodgdon brand powder. Hodgdon, Hogden, Hodgdon, however you pronounce it. I'm using a Hodgdon brand powder. This particular one is the H4831, okay? This powder with this 150 grain bullet and a 24 inch standard stainless barrel from Remington. It asks you all of these questions when you're choosing your reloading chart. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go to the range, I'll set up my gun with a chronograph, and a chronograph is going to give you a speed of the bullet coming out of the barrel. Uh, I don't own a chronograph. I borrowed one from a buddy of mine a couple years ago when I was making up these loads. So you take the maximum load data 
which for this particular round is 78 grains. And I will make four assemblies, four completed uh, cartridge assemblies, starting off at the 78 grain maximum. And I'll work my way back about 10%. So I'll work my way all the way back down to 70 grains. And I'll make four rounds for each. So I'll have 478, 477, 476. And I will do that. So I start shooting. And I'll start down at the minimum. Okay. So when I had my 70 grain rounds, I was getting about 2,600 feet per second out of it. But as I increased the, the powder charge, the muzzle velocity started to increase. But when I got above 75 grains, 75 grains gave me 2,800 feet per second or thereabouts. Okay, I, I didn't actually write down the exact speed, but that's about what I got, 2,800 feet per second. But as I went to 76 grains, 77 grains, 78 grains, the muzzle velocity didn't increase, so all I was doing was wasting powder. So that 2,800 feet per second with my 150 grain bullet, that is the maximum velocity that I'm going to get out of this barrel. So there's no reason for me to go higher on the grains. I'm just wasting. Okay? I'm just wasting powder at that point. So I found that... So 75 grains was the max. I'll back one off to 74 because it was, I like to have it a little bit of a cushion for safety. So when I'm loading these, I will want to drop anywhere from 74 to 75 grains on the nose. If I'm less than 74 grains, I'm going to add more, a little bit. And I have a precision powder measure which we're going to be using. This is a precision powder measure. I could actually rotate this and with a little bit of powder in there and I could actually drop individual grains out of this into the casing. So 74, 75 grains, that's exactly what I want with this bullet. And of course I want all of the bullets to be exactly the same weight. So I'm gonna be either filing or dimpling these. I'll go through these and I'll weigh them and then we'll put them in the machine and I'll show you the other powder measure that I have and we'll actually drop powder and start making precision rounds. So I've got all my bullets weighed and organized by weight. So you have 149.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, this row here is 150 grains on the nose, and that's 150.1. Now, these bullets are advertised as 150 grain, so they're well within my error envelope, which is one grain plus or minus. So it's either 149 grain or 151 grain. So the, all of these bullets are fine. I'm not going to have to do anything to the weight to try to match them because it's not going to make a difference with this barrel and the ranges that I shoot. Okay, so I've got the Loadmaster set up. I have my 300 Win Mag holder, shell holder, and I have my different dies set up in my plate. I got that removable plate, so of course my dies all go in there. Now, this setup looks a little bit different. First of all, I don't have the, I'm not doing powder just yet, so I don't have the hopper on top of the powder drop. And the dies are a little different too. Now, we're loading for accuracy. So, I'm basically using this five station press, five stage press as a single stage press. And I'm doing one operation at a time. So, this first operation is my decapper and my neck sizer. So, you can go look that up. There are plenty of videos on the advantages when you're shooting a bolt action rifle for accuracy, there's plenty of videos showing the advantages of just sizing the neck, which is just this section here from the shoulder up and making sure that's round and consistent over a full length resize, which will go all the way down to the belt at the bottom. And again, because I'm firing these out of a single gun all of these are being fired out of a single gun I don't have multiple 
uh, rifles that shoot that caliber, uh, I could just get away with just the neck resize. So that's what that collet is doing. So basically all I'm doing right now is I'm taking the primers out, which there you go, there's a removed primer so you can get a picture of the flash hole. Okay, come on, focus, there we go. There's your, your primer pocket, and the primer pocket's all nasty from the last primer that, that was in there. And I'll be cleaning that and resizing just the necks. So all I do to resize the neck is I'll take a round, I'll put the cartridge in the holder, and if you heard that pop, that was the primer coming out. Now when I resize this neck, I have to put about, the book says about 25 pounds of pressure on that neck, and what that'll do is there's a little resizing die that just reshapes the neck of that cartridge. Then I'll take it and I'll rotate it about a quarter turn and I'll do that same operation again and I won't press the lever in to rotate it around to the priming section because I'm not going to be using that priming die. I'm going to be hand priming these and I have to clean out the primer pockets but to go back to this neck sizing so that neck size right there this is what's going to hold that bullet in place. So all of my bullets are 308s, 0 .308, okay? So obviously the inside of that has to be less than 0 .308. So of course I zero my dial caliper and I just take that out and I'll rotate that shell around a little bit to get an overall measurement of the inside of that case and the inside of this case is measuring 0 .30 between 304 and 305 so I'm getting about three thousandths of an inch of difference between the bullet obviously being the larger the 0 .308 and all of those I already measured I'm not going to waste my time these are all exactly 0 .308 of an inch I'll just do one real quick just to show you. That's exactly 0 .308 of an inch. And so I'm getting about three thousandths of an inch of difference. And when I press the bullet in there, that three thousandths of an inch is enough to hold the bullet inside the case. We don't crimp, I don't crimp um, these 300 Win Mag rounds. I don't use a crimping tool on it. There's no reason to. And all the videos that I've watched say it's more accurate without the crimp on the 300 Win Mag. So just to know, I crimp all my rifle, my pistol bullets, and I'll actually put a crimp on the 223s uh, because it's it's an automatic and it beats them up. But anyway, that's all that we're going to do with the way of sizing. So. After these are all sized, I'm going to go ahead and clean out the primer pockets. To finish case preparation, I do four operations. The first operation is I actually clean out the primer pocket. So we got to get all of that nastiness. We got to get all of that nastiness out of that primer pocket. So I have a primer pocket brush. I have a primer pocket brush. So I will sit here and I will clean out all of that nastiness inside that primer pocket. And the idea is not only to get the primer pocket clean, but you want the primers to sit be completely seated inside the case and that dirt that builds up on these bigger cases and it's on the smaller cases too it's on the pistol rounds but I'm not reloading for accuracy when I'm reloading pistol rounds at this point so I got most of the nastiness out of there so now that the pocket is 
relatively clean, I will take my resizing, my pocket resizer. So this is an actual cutting tool that will resize and check that primer pocket to make sure that primer pocket is uniform and cut to the correct depth. You can see the way it's shaped and it will, without putting too much pressure, a couple of ins and outs on each case and now I have a nice clean resized primer pocket. The third operation I'm going to do for case preparation is the flash hole. So I'm pretty sure you can see through that flash hole. So that flash hole is actually pretty clean. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this tool, this tool cleans out the inside of the flash hole and puts a little bit of a bevel on it. And you can see that I have this collar set to the size of that case. So it goes in, I can tell that it's all the way in and I have a little bit of room on the end and I'll just go in and out a couple of times. And now, if I was to shine a light in there, I have a cute little bevel on the inside of that flash hole. So that flash hole is now clean. I can do it real quick, couple times on the outside of the flash hole. So now my flash hole is clean. And the last operation for case prep for this cartridge is I will bevel the inside and outside of the case neck. So now all of these case necks are all sized to the way I want. So just to make it a little bit easier for the bullets to go in, I'll take out any burrs on the inside of the case. And that's exactly one, two, three, four, five, done. Not too much pressure because you can actually, this is a cutter, this is actually pretty sharp and that could actually, that actually is designed to cut the brass. And then using the other side, I'll do the outside and that's it. This case is now clean, prepped, ready to be primed and finish loading. Now that I've got all of the cases cleaned, the primer pockets and the flash holes cleaned out, I've got the tops beveled, Everything looks good with the, the cases. Let's move on to priming. So for the 300 Winchester Magnum, I will use a hand priming tool. This is a Lee hand priming tool, and it operates pretty much the same way as the priming tool does on the Loadmaster, except that I'm doing this by hand. So it's got the same type of tray with those little ridges inside, and I've got to wiggle this around a little bit to all of the primers are in the tray the correct way with their opening facing up. I lock down my shield so that clicks and then I will start priming these. And I like hand priming for accuracy because I can feel when the primer is completely seated inside the case and that is a perfectly seated primer and she stands up and doesn't wobble and I don't have to worry about adjusting the machine the loadmaster machine and I will continue to load these very carefully again this is why I like hand priming my rifle rounds these and it goes fairly quickly Again, a couple of safety issues, okay? You notice I'm not, I'm, I'm, I have to look down to make sure that the primer is in the chute. But when I actually squeeze the handle, I'm facing it away from my face. Because there's nothing better than to have you, pow, have a primer go off right in your face. So I found an interesting problem with two cases. I have two cases that have dents in them. So these two I'm gonna to have to do a full length resize on. Okay, so I have the full length resizing die up in my primer station and to do a full length resizing die with a case this big, you have to put a little bit of lube on there. So 
I'm actually using resizing lubricant. And you just slather that all over. It's more like a wax, but it will prevent the case from getting stuck up inside the resizing die. And if it was to ever get stuck or to break off, there's a whole procedure. I can disassemble it and get the case out. It's not that difficult. I've had it done before. So I put the case in to get it to that position. And I run it all the way up into the die till it stops. Pull it down and out. And let's see what we got. Nope. Still dented. One for the trash. Let's do it again with the other one. That one came out a little bit better, but I'm still going to throw it away. I'm not going to reuse that. So there we go. So there's two cases. That problem and that causes a weak spot in the case. Okay, we have our large powder measure set up. I have this set up so that it drops about a grain light. So we're looking for 74 grains. So this should be dropping about 73, 73.1 to whatever it is. But it's gonna be short of that 74. And then I'm going to be using a precision powder dispenser to actually bring the weight up to the 74 grains that I want. I want exactly 74 grains, plus or minus. Now, this time, we're going to go for a tenth of a grain. Each one of those little pellets weighs about 0.1 to 0.15 of a grain, maybe even 3.07 of a grain, something like that. We're, we're talking about tenths of a grain, thousandths of an ounce, okay? And we want exactly, again, we're reloading for precision, so we want that. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to stick each individual round. I'm going to do this for each one of these rounds. I'm going to put it on the scale, zero the scale out. Don't forget that each of these individual rounds might, each of these cases with the primers and everything in them, they might differ from five to 10 grains in either direction. So you have to, you have to, you can't assume they all weigh exactly the same. So each individual one. So that's set to zero. I'm just going to verify that that's on zero. Okay. And now we're going to put some powder in. So we're going to raise that up into the machine. I'm going to get my powder. Raise that lever up. And that drops the powder into the calibrated cavity. And then real slow. There we go. And that'll drop it into the case. I want to go slow because there's a little collet in here that acts like a funnel. So you want to make sure all the powder goes into the case. I have one or two grains floating around over here because I've loaded one or two already to make sure the machine was working okay. And it's just, it, that's what happens. One or two might get away from you. So, okay. So we verify that the powder is in here and then we're going to weigh that. And that comes up with 72.8 grains. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our precision powder measure and I'm going to slowly start dropping individual grains into the case. And by I do that, I just kind of turn that little knob on the back until I start. There we go. There's one, two. There we go. So 72.7. 72.8. We're going to bring that all the way up to exactly 74. Okay, 73.3. 73.4. Put that down over there. 73. Point, I mean, I'm sorry, 74 on the nose. 74 on the nose, so let's see if we can get that in the video. So 74, 74.1. 
Okay, so 74 on the nose. So we have exactly 74 grains of powder. I'm going to put this back into the machine and just rotate it around so where we have our bullet press. And then we're going to press our bullet into the top of that round. And that sits up there real nice and neat. And just brrrp. And let's get that out of there. Okay. And we have a loaded round. Let's double check. The maximum overall length is 3.34. So let's double check 3.34. And absolutely, we have just a little bit of room in there. And we are perfect. So that is now a loaded precision 300 wind mag round. I have another one here. And I can guarantee that these rounds will put holes in paper at at least 100 yards within an inch. 200 yards, the best I've gotten is about an inch and a half group at 200 yards. Um, but the range that I shoot at, it, it's always a little windy up there at, the, at Cherry Ridge.